see we've got some more hard drive related upgrades or actually more like additions well not great in the case of that thing but we're gonna have some additions to the t410 again and we're gonna have an upgrade for the t500 which is currently backing up that 16 gig drive is not gonna be big enough I know that but anyway what we have here is my Seagate what is this this is an expansion portable drive. I don't think you can read that because I don't think there's any, quite enough light in here. Uh, this is, of course, the first video that I'm shooting with the uh, new curtain being closed. We can certainly fix that. Add some light in here. That's better. Ah, there we go. Seagate expansion portable drive. That's the old enclosure. It's a rather large hunk of junk. But I'm going to be putting this uh, 320 gigabyte Toshiba drive in there. I'm using that to store backups. This I'm going to be putting into the new Nexstar TX enclosure. And I'm going to be moving this over uh, shortly. Uh, but the Nexstar TX is basically going to house this. And I'm going to use this drive for uh, my... VHDs because having a one terabyte drive for those is a little bit of overkill. The other thing that I got is actually this a Seagate SSHD that stands for solid state hybrid drive which basically means that it has both a 500 gigabyte hard drive in it as well as I believe it's an 8 gigabyte SSD catch it's an ST500LM000 Manufactured in February of 2014. Really? This is an older drive. Um, and, well, there you pretty much go. What did I get that drive for? That drive cost me about $75. So, actually, it's rather cheap. Most of the time, if you're going to get an SSHD, it's going to cost you upwards of $100. But this one happened to be on sale, so there you go. I have showed you guys how to do this several times, but for those of you that are new here, which actually would be quite a few of you, especially after watching my um, Sunbeam fan video, um, I'm going to do it again. You never know. It might help somebody. So in order to start, you need a bit that is small enough to do this. This is, I believe, a P20 or a PZ0 bit. Uh, it's a modular screwdriver, but that's okay. one of the best tools that I have. So this screw actually has to come out completely. Then you can pull that off, unflip this latch, and then simply pull the drive out. This is the drive that's in there right now. It's a 7200.4, 320 gigabyte drive. And it's not in the best of health. It does have some bad sectors on it. Well, sorry, I guess I shouldn't say that. It's, it's processed some reallocation events. It hasn't actually reallocated the sector, though, so... That's going to come out of there, and this new SSHD is going to go in there. And yes, I realize it's a Seagate product, but I thought, what the hell, I might as well try one. And the Black 2 drives, which I believe are WD's response to that, are actually quite expensive as well, so... I thought, what the hell, a lot of people have been making noise about the SSHDs recently, so might as well try it, so let's put it in. Now I'm not going to show you this because I need two hands to do it, but you just remove these two sleds and then there are the usual four screws on the caddy that you need to remove, but using the same size screwdriver bit. 
All right, curiosity killed the cat, I guess, but certainly won't kill me. Um, I've got this scale here for a reason. I'm gonna weigh these two drives because even though this is a thinner drive, it feels like it weighs about as much, if not more, than the other mechanical drive that's sitting right there. So let's power this up and hope that they're not gonna break my scale. They shouldn't. Okay, so that's about 108 grams. Fluctuates a little bit, 108, 107. This is 89. So as it turns out, I'm wrong. But that's okay. That's what I've got this for. It's here to pro either prove me correct or prove that I'm the world's biggest liar. And, um, well, there you go. So now let's install this for real. And there is the drive installed. It fits this caddy like a glove. But then again, I wasn't expecting anything less. So now we can put this back into the machine. It's put it in upside down. I don't understand it either. I think it put it upside down. Nope, maybe that's not the right way to put it in. Oops. And you can put this back on and put the screw back in, close it up, and get ready to transfer your files over. Just about the only noise being made right now is that thing, but I want to see if I can hear this new hard drive spin up. Let's power it up. I didn't hear it, but that's okay. In. It is detected, so that's a good net. That's a good sign. I usually choose expert mode and disk to local disk. So that will send the entire disk over. Source disk is going to be our 320 gig. Now you want to watch this because, as you can see, SDA is the built in hard drive, usually, and SDB is any other drive, be it here. This one comes first, then this one, and then any of the USB drives just going to leave these options alone skip checking and repairing the file system use the partition table from the source enter to continue so warning all data on the listed hard disks will be overwritten and will be lost we don't really care since SDA is should be a blank drive anyway you want to, once again, check and make sure that this is the right drive. Um, it's the ST500LM000, which is the drive that you want to erase, so we'll hit yes. It'll ask you again. This is your last chance to stop, just in case you there like there is a problem. You better notice it before here, or before you hit yes to this. Otherwise, you better hope that you have backups. So, hit yes, and it will begin. Do you want to clone the bootloader? Yes, we do want to clone the bootloader because we want to be able to boot from this partition afterwards. It says it's going to take about half an hour and that's not too far off. If this were a desktop, you should probably consider putting this system on a UPS. Because it's a laptop, it shouldn't really matter that much. One other thing that's worth mentioning is that if you see a disparity like this, that's normal. This is the number of what's called data blocks. This is um, the number of sectors on your disk that happen to have uh, data on them, whereas this is the total number of sectors on the disk. That's why there's a disparity, because there's a lot less data being stored than there is at, well, there's a lot less used blocks than there is blocks on the system. And here is what you should see if all goes successful. Now we're gonna hit enter. We're gonna hit power off. It's gonna reject the CD. Hit enter. And the system shuts off. We're gonna unplug our USB device power up the system again and see what happens. 
pretty normal startup time, uh, but that should change because the way that these SSHDs work is you have to run them a couple of uh, times, and um, then they'll start adding things to the cache. You must restart your computer to apply these changes. Well, sure, I guess. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to extend the hard drive here. Extend the volume. Maximum space. Might take a while, as you can see. Now you have the drive itself. It's the smart stuff. 500 gigabyte. And it's running in SATA 303 gigabit, or sorry, SATA. Yeah, SATA 3 gigabit per second, even though it supports SATA 6 gigabit per second. Um, because this machine only supports SATA 300, it's old. It's an older system, so... I think that's pretty much it for this, so let's get on with uh, the next part of this project, and that is the other machine. Alright, so I just assembled uh, the drive with the screws. Now the screws are really tiny and the holes that they go into are also really tiny, so you want to be careful that you don't drop screws on the floor. I didn't do that because I am careful. They give you two spare screws, so that's a bonus, I guess. What they give you in the box is a USB cable, the enclosure itself. They also give you a little plastic piece to fit on the back of the drive to protect the circuit board. They give you the four screws, and they actually also give you a screwdriver. If you didn't see my uh, other video about the Next RTX, which you probably didn't. I don't think any of you really watched that. Well, a couple of you did. I don't think a lot of people ended up watching that video. The USB cable itself has two plugs, one of which is a data plug, or functions as a data plug, and the other one provides power to the drive. Both of which I believe are actually actually could, in theory, provide data and power, but you need both of them in order for the drive to function properly. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set up the Toshiba and I'm going to plug them both in at once. And we're going to get that all set up. Alright, so let's go ahead and plug them in. I'm going to start with the... Um, Next star drive. Not sure if you can see what I'm doing. Alright, so it very clearly, where is it? So that one's plugged in, and now I'm gonna plug in the Seagate drive. It should both work. Well, we've lost another drive here. I'm gonna take a look at this and see what's going on. Alright, this is probably going to take a long time to load. Um, let's see here. That's my good drive. There's the D files drive. We need to delete that partition. And delete this partition as well. So there's that one taken care of. We can delete this. This is that second 320 gig. Call it backup drive, because that's what it's going to be used for. There we go. That's now formatted and ready to go. 
All that stuff is pretty much ready. We have all tenderized here. And so I'll begin transferring all of the data between these, and uh, hopefully this won't take too long. 